Over 9 million Americans suffer from some form of dementia. It's not just one disease, but a range of conditions caused by changes in the brain that affect memory and thinking skills. Dementia is a serious progressive condition. And for the 16 million Americans who are caregivers for these dementia patients, often loved ones or spouses, the journey with them is devastating too. There are no cures or effective long-term treatments. It can be lonely, confusing, and exhausting for both patients and caregivers. But with advancing technology, there is hope for improved quality of life in an unlikely source. Robots, yes. Robotic pets are helping to bring companionship and joy to those suffering in silence and hope for those providing care. Hello, and thank you for joining us today. I'm Steve Cohn with Capital Caring Health, and I'm delighted to welcome you to this special program on dementia and robotic companion pets. During this show, we'll explore the relationship between dementia and loneliness. We'll find out who's responsible for making these robots that are providing patients with companionship and comfort. And we'll hear from an industry leader who's helping to get these robotic companions to veterans free of charge. But first, let's meet Patty LaFleur from Seattle a caregiver for her mom who suffers from dementia. Hello, Linda. Hello. Nice to see you. Oh, hello, hello. It's so good to see you today. Are you ready to make some music with me? Yes. So my mom's name is Linda, and she is the most wonderful lady. She has the biggest heart, and she's so friendly, and she's just lovely. And then I'll hold the pink one. Ready? You got to okay. shake it. All right. And she was the stay-at-home mom that everyone wished they had. She made sure that we were well-fed and well-taken care of and supported. Look, that's me from preschool, and that's you with our dog. And she ran the household. My dad worked at Boeing, and she just ran the household for us. Can you talk a little bit about when you notice symptoms that led to the conclusion that she has some form of dementia? Yeah, so she also has been a type one diabetic for over 50 years. So actually one of the first signs for us that she had dementia was because she was forgetting to take her insulin. So in addition, she managed the house, right? She paid all of the bills, she took care of the finances, and we started to notice that bills weren't getting paid like they had been, or she was forgetting to send a check off, or she was struggling with even writing the check. So we noticed that as a family, and then we decided to take her to the doctor and kind of explore what could potentially be going on. When the diagnosis of dementia uh, was given, what kind of changes did you have to deal with in order to make your mom comfortable? So she had gone to the doctor, they had done a cognitive examination, and then they did the MRI. And when they did the MRI, it revealed that she actually had some brain loss in multiple areas. So they weren't able to pinpoint exactly what kind of dementia it was. So they called it mixed dementia. She was in the early stages of dementia, so there were a lot of things that she was still able to do independently. Bathroom, toileting, um, showering, dressing. And about seven years ago? About seven years ago, yeah. So it was seven years ago that she was diagnosed. She was able to still do a lot of those things, but as the dementia has progressed like it is, and she's in the mid to late stages now, there's a lot more adaptations that I have to make. She needs help with most things at this point. She's able to feed herself. She's able to brush her teeth. Um, she's still very happy. We have lots of fun. You ready? Pizza, you got to sit here. Popcorn. Yes. Look, popcorn's so excited. She's even barking. She's so excited. But there are a lot of the independence things that she's completely dependent on me for. I've been uh very uh, excited to meet her two uh, doggy companions who I think you've named Popcorn and Pizza. Yeah, she named them. Okay. And, <laughs> and uh, so how did you come about these companion robotic uh, pets? Yeah, um, at the time we had a caregiver who was coming into our home and she had said, 
well, I've seen these robotic animals from Joy for All Pets, and I'm, I think that maybe you could try that. So I ordered the first one, popcorn, and I didn't know what her response would be, and we gave it to her, and she hasn't put popcorn down <laughs> since. Popcorn is goes everywhere with us. She goes to doctor's appointments. She goes on vacations with us. She sits with us on the couch. She eats with us. We do music class with her. We do art class. She even has an art, like a little artist hat she wears for when we have art She's class. She's a companion like a dog should be. Yep, and then we had popcorn and then about three months after that, maybe a little longer, they came out with the other dog, this freckled pup. And so then of course we had to get that one. So now we have popcorn and pizza. It's so nice that you're uh, spreading the word about uh, the effect that these companion robotic pets have with your mom. And can you tell me a little bit about uh, the social media interactions that you do? Yeah, in posting about my mom online, I found a whole group of people that were exactly like me in their 20s, in their 30s, that were caring for their parents. We just all shared what we were doing and we just learned together. I learned about caring for my mom by being part of a community. People that are in the beginning of their journey, they see some of the things that I do with my mom, like these wonderful robot dogs, and they get them. They purchase them and they try them with their family in a situation where she's having a lot of care done to her, she still gets to be a caregiver with her robot dogs. That's a dogs. Great, great point. And I've noticed, by the way, that popcorn and pizza have their own little collars, which yeah, just like a, a live dog would have. Totally. Uh, and I also understand that you're introducing two new dogs into the household, two new robotic uh, companion dogs. Now, are they gonna be popcorn too and pizza too, or? It's, I really believe in reading my mom. So I really try to think as a caregiver, or I use the word care partner, about what she, like what she wants. What do you think? <laughs> so I'm gonna kind of let her take the lead. Sure. We'll introduce popcorn and pizza, and if she feels like, ooh, this is a new dog, yeah. then okay. You wanna hold popcorn? Yeah. That's popcorn, right? This is popcorn. I think it's just such a great way to find joy. Joy for all, right? Totally. And I feel like so often we think of the hard parts of dementia. Is that too exciting? <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's, that, that's a lot of excitement. <laughs> These dogs have helped really for us to see that there is still so much love in dementia. Thank you, Patty, for sharing your story with us. It sure is inspirational for other caregivers and people suffering from dementia. Like Patty's mom, millions of Americans suffer from dementia and thousands of new cases are identified each year. Alzheimer's disease is a form of dementia that most people have heard about and it makes up between 60 to 70% of those cases. In the United States, an estimated 5.8 million Americans have Alzheimer's dementia. Families generally cannot afford the average $4,300 monthly cost of facility-based dementia care, and so they struggle on their own for as long as feasible. The result is often isolation and loneliness. Dr. Leanne West can tell us more about what these patients and caregivers experience. Leanne, thanks so much for joining me today. And can you tell the audience a little bit about how dementia affects people as they age? Great question, Stephen. Thanks so much for having me sure. here today. Um, as we know, dementia is becoming more and more of a prevalent issue that's affecting aging Americans staying at home. Um, what we do know within the medical community that dementia often presents differently for each patient, but it, it is a chronic progressive uh, condition for which we have no cure. This only becomes more compounded, as you can imagine, during times of COVID and pandemic, really lending itself to people feeling more isolated and lonely. Sure. You and I have talked about this before, but for the audience, Loneliness, loneliness and, and dementia. Um, mm -hmm. I guess you see that a lot, right? Absolutely, and, and loneliness takes um, multiple forms. Loneliness not just for the patient who feels socially isolated from their loved ones, their family, their day-to-day -day routine, but also the, the people that are home with them, the caregivers, the ones that love them and are with them day-to-day. -day. And caregivers, speaking of caregivers, mm -hmm. how does dementia affect a caregiver? I'm sure it's very tough, right? 
Absolutely. And what we find among caregivers is that largely it, it tends to be a role reversal later in life. Many of them may not have a background, obviously, working in healthcare, and they're now being faced with being the caregiver for a loved one when, in fact, previous to that, they were the child. And so in as much as they're trying to have their, their parent uh, to be safe and to be intact and managing behaviors that are up and down day to day, by virtue of the schedule and the work they're doing and having to stay home with the one they're caring for, are often socially isolated as well. And that uh, reminds me of companionship, mm -hmm. uh, companionship for dementia patients and caregivers. Um, what is that all about? Well, I think it gets back to the premise that as human beings, we connect through love, through nurture, through touch, we're tactile creatures. And that often when we're approaching end of life, we've lost our roles and responsibilities yeah. of purpose, job, even practicing day-to-day -day ADLs, we're looking outwardly to somebody else to care for us. So it puts the focus and emphasis on someone or something outside of themselves. Uh, and an another question um, with regard to our robotic pet friends. Mm -hmm. um, I've heard that uh, in some cases, uh, folks with dementia can actually have their meds reduced as a result of interaction with these pets. Have you seen any evidence of that? Absolutely. So one of the biggest complaints that I face as an internist, especially as a hospice physician, is challenging um, and, and working through some of the behaviors, keeping a loved one safe, who at times may become explosive, agitated, depressed, even to the point of hallucinating. Yeah. Um, more often than not, the traditional medical community, the, the answer would be sedatives, hypnotics, more medication to the point of sedation. What we have found that with the use of robotic pets and therapy program is that there's the need for polypharmacy is actually less, and that through self-soothing, tactile stimulation, that the need for some of these psychotropics are actually reduced. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. And interactions with robotic pets, uh, with dementia patients, I hear, for instance, that patients will name these pets after pets they actually had, uh, you know, growing up. Mm -hmm. um, have you seen the interaction occur and, and what takes place? Absolutely. It's, um, it's really a beautiful thing to witness and I often say that I have the greatest job. The privilege is mine for being welcomed into patients and families' homes at the, the final moments of life. But that often for our advanced dementia patients, they naturally revert back to a place in time that was pleasurable, that gave, gave them great memories. Um, and that certainly speaks to the, the attachment to pets and, the, and the, the animals that they love. So more often than not, we find that our patients will name or rename the robotic pets to really mirror a pet that they cared for in their youth. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. And as I like to say with robotic pets, no feeding, no pooping, no shedding, no kidding. Low maintenance. Uh, yeah. And you know, the beauty of that too, and I can say this as a healthcare professional, is that often many of our patients are in these acute care facilities, Georgetown, Hopkins, that have restrictions to pets yeah. in that environment, which comes in the face of what we feel philosophically as hospice doctors. We want to bring the care and everybody that loves you around, around you. This is something that hospitals will allow and they would welcome with open arms. And for folks without dementia, uh, they, they love these pets as well and of course caregivers uh, interact and I'm sure you see the caregiver enjoy having the pet there too. Absolutely I, I think part of the challenge is when you have um, a loved one at home with advanced dementia is not only keeping them safe but giving them a purpose, a purpose outside of themselves. Um, and the beauty of this it doesn't require close supervision it's it's interactive it's intimate physical touching between this pet therapy robotic animal and, and the patient. And by being soothing and reducing the agitation combativeness, the caregiver can then feel free to step away and do other things that he or she may want to do, but for fear of safety doesn't. Well, Leanne, this has been great. Thanks so much for you know educating all of us about dementia, which is increasing as we speak, mm -hmm. and also the great benefits that robotic pets bring to folks both the caregiver and the patient. Thank you very much. Thanks so much for having me, Steve. And coming up, we'll meet a local industry leader that's helping to give these robotic pets to veterans. But first, I'll introduce you to the company that makes these companions, and we'll find out how a toy for kids became such an impactful assistive technology. Here at Capital Caring Health, we are working to provide free of charge companion pets with advanced robotics like kibbles and butterscotch. They both would love to be in the lap of a dementia sufferer, brightening their days and nights in so many wonderful ways. We hope to provide these pets to over 5,000 of your neighbors suffering from Alzheimer's and other forms of dementia. Plus, you can also order a pet for your own family. So please, 
visit our website today at capitalcaring.org slash companion pets. With support from you and other viewers, these amazing pets will do wonders for so many families. Again, please visit capitalcaring.org slash companion pets. Thank you. There are a lot of studies that have been done on robotic companion pets and their effectiveness at improving overall quality of life and care for older adults. These studies show consistent themes of reduced feelings of isolation and loneliness and improved quality of care and life for older adults and families and care providers. They also show reduced use of medication, increased cognitive activity, increased feelings of purpose, and reduced burden of care for care partners. I'd like to introduce you to the CEO of Ageless Innovation, the company that makes these companion pets to get the inside scoop. Ted, thanks for joining me today, and I see you've brought a couple of your pals with you. Yeah, absolutely, these are, uh, these are our companion pets, and thanks so much for having me. Can you tell me about the history of these pets and how you have focused them on older adults? So our company is Ageless Innovation, but we started as part of Hasbro. And so uh, about 2015, I was brought in to lead this new innovation team focused on you know, leveraging Hasbro's assets in new markets and new channels. And our team chose healthcare and health and wellness as sort of an area where we felt what Hasbro was great at, the ability to engage, gamify, um, help create meaningful connections. We thought those things would be really valuable in the healthcare space. Yeah. As we did our research, uh, we found that there were products 20 years earlier that were intended for four to eight year old girls. That was the category at the time. Uh, and you know, when you, we looked back at the reviews, about 20% of the reviews were, oh, say so the cat's printing for you now. Um, <laughs> The, the, about 20% of the reviews were mom not buying it for their four to eight year old daughter, but buying it for an aging loved one. And so we started to really lean into that and, and started going out to you know, assisted living, nursing homes, memory care, and just kind of talking to older adults and seeing you know, what it is that they're looking for. Yeah. And we found that you know, two really fundamental you know, sort of pillar insights. One was that older adults definitely want more fun, joy, and play in their life. So that's number one. And number two, there was this need for interactive companionship that you know, was an epidemic that really wasn't talked about at the time. But loneliness and isolation is going to kill more older adults and cigarettes and heart attacks combined over the next 30 years. Good and point. so that's really what yeah. we wanted to address. And so we launched the brand in 2015 and um, we've been an amazing journey since then. So they bring joy to so many people and the name uh, that, that you've, you've come up with is Joy For All. I think it's a great name. Um, can I credit you with coming up with that? Uh, no, uh, but you can credit, I, I was part of the team that <laughs> okay. came up with it. Um, but we, you know, it, it, in our Hasbro days, you know, what I found, and you know, I thought when we named this brand, this was gonna be pretty easy. Uh, and it turns out naming a brand is not that easy. And so we were trying to get the essence of what we were trying to convey, what the product was, be a little more descriptive. Yeah. Uh, and there's a really rigorous process at Hasbro as it relates to this stuff. So we're in a room with about 30, you know, writers and creative folks, and we pass a piece of paper around your lap to put one word that you know on the paper and pass it to the next person um, and you know we did that a few different times and hours of work and you know we came up with joy for all and it really was obviously the joy and the happiness parts obvious but we were trying to promote you know how can we help people know that this is not something for kids which Hasbro is famous for right but they had never launched a brand for older adults and so this idea of joy for all really sort of was more inclusive and 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 we think uh, we're, we're so happy that that uh, that ended up being the name so, as a matter of fact, I have two of these in my office at Capital Caring Health, and every morning when I walk in, they greet me. Can you explain a little about how that actually works? You know, there's sensors and motors and technology inside, and we try not to talk about that much as much. We talk about the magic and the features, and the features were all things that were told to us by older adults. So, with some of the things we heard were they wanted realism, they wanted affordability, uh, things like tapered whiskers and paw pads, and you know, things that you know really were what they remembered about their pets. Um, so for instance, the cat, um, we heard the cats vibrate when they purr. And so we created this technology called VibraPurr. Uh, and um, in, the, in, the, in the pup, you know, we 
we will try to replicate that tactile interaction and so it, the pup has a subtle heartbeat that you feel as it starts to calm down and acting less, less like a puppy. So, you know, things like the cat never does what, cats never do what yeah, you want them to do. I think you mentioned to me once that they're actually programmed to be random like real ca cats. Right? Exactly, yeah, the cats, uh, <laughs> it's, it, it is what it is. Cats don't do what you want them to do when you want them to do it, so we tried to create that. And so just because you pet its back doesn't mean you're gonna get a meow or I can't a reach the dog, but. <laughs> He's he would, a little more predictable. Yeah. <laughs> And the great thing is that um, these pets have proven so beneficial for folks with dementia. Can you talk about, you know, that and how that came to be and what you all have discovered in terms of benefits for dementia patients? Sure. In the beginning when we set out, really what we were trying to do is create a fun, engaging, joyful product. And, and we really wanted to, and, and as the user testimonials started to come in, the reviews started to come in, there was it was an overwhelming number of reviews about the positive impact on people with dementia and Alzheimer's. And that actually caught the eye of clinicians and academics who wanted to take the anecdotal evidence and prove it out. And so now we have about a dozen published research, right. you know, papers and journals. Um, and in that, the type of things that, you know, that are being suffered by people with, with Alzheimer's, anxiety and um, really difficulty in transition. And what it's been proven to do is resilience, add resilience, add you know, sort of positive feelings, less depression, those type of things. And not only is it great for the older adult, but it's been great for the caregivers and the loved ones, helping them through the difficult situations and transitions that happen in a normal day with you know, caring for someone with Alzheimer's. And dementia. I understand, um, I think you mentioned to me once that they actually, a lot of, uh, uh, dementia patients name these little guys after pets that they actually had in the past. Yeah, I think that's pretty universal. Um, yeah. and, and Is this, uh, I think, butterscotch? That's and butterscotch and that's whisper. Whisper? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we've got, uh, we, we, we name them too. So uh, <laughs> yeah. I think it's pretty universal. And it's something that, that I think is, it, it's part of the importance of th that idea of affordability. What we try to create is a one-to-one -one model. Um, there's a lot of social robotics out there that are very expensive. Um, that are a one-to-many model. Not that they're not doing great things, it's just really difficult for somebody to afford a multi-thousand dollar type of uh, a robot. But to have something that's affordable that they not only can name, but actually treat as their own. And as part of the magic is that caring for something or someone. And again, we're not trying to fool anybody to, the, prove right. it, to think that these are real. What we've discovered is there's just a lot of people who can't have pets at certain stages of their life. And we've tried to create something that- or they're in um, a situation where live pets aren't allowed. Correct, residential, could be residential, could be health, it's a number of reasons. And also, it's easy, you just flip one switch, right? Um, yes, the simplicity piece is really important. And, yeah. you know, take it out of the box, you, you name it butterscotch, <laughs> and, and so the magic starts. <laughs> Ted, thanks so much for coming today. And coming up, there are thousands of aging veterans in the Washington, D.C., Maryland, and Virginia area suffering from dementia. We'll talk to a local industry leader who's helping to give them all a robotic companion pet for free. Here at Capital Caring Health, we are working to provide free of charge companion pets with advanced robotics like kibbles and butterscotch. They both would love to be in the lap of a dementia sufferer, brightening their days and nights in so many wonderful ways. We hope to provide these pets to over 5,000 of your neighbors suffering from Alzheimer's and other forms of dementia. Plus, you can also order a pet for your own family. So please, visit our website today at capitalcaring.org slash companion pets. With support from you and other viewers, these amazing pets will do wonders for so many families. Again, please visit capitalcaring.org slash companion pets. Thank you. Michelle, thanks so much for appearing on the show. Thank you, it's and great before, to be here. Yeah, and, and, and before we discuss the companion and robotic pets, I'd love to hear you talk a bit about uh, your, your role and sure. responsibilities at Washington Gas. Yeah, you bet. So I lead the sales, marketing, and customer teams at Washington Gas. And as part of that world, I, um, we lead consumer affairs as well, which is critical for us in that function to understand the needs of the communities uh, where we offer service. And in focusing on the needs of the community, we prioritize health and safety, um, which is what led us to be very interested in the Pets for Vets program offered by, or uh, supported by Capital Care. Sure, and um, one reason I'm so pleased you're with me today is to, because you all are supporting the Capital Caring Pets for Veterans program. And as you know, um, what we're trying to do is provide pets for veterans who are suffering from dementia. 
And I believe that uh, you and your colleagues uh, got interested in this because you learned that the Veterans Administration is actually helping us identify veterans who are suffering from dementia, correct? That is very correct. So, um, you know, as a natural gas utility, we're very focused on basic human needs, right? Because we offer warmth, we offer heat. And so when we look at areas to offer support and, and to give, it is in that category, broader category of human and needs. And this is actually a form of warmth and heat. It is, it, <laughs> it is, absolutely. And so we were thrilled to learn of the benefits of the pets, right? The robotic companion pets for veterans because it does offer health um, supports. And even more thrilled to hear about the focus on the veterans community because we too at Washington Gas are very focused on giving special attention to that community that has earned it, quite frankly. And um, we have a mutual goal of um, uh, being able to provide um, a thousand veterans suffering from dementia mm -hmm. free of charge with one of these pets. And you guys, you and your colleagues at Washington Gas are really leading the way in the business community here. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. I mean, we, as I mentioned, we were thrilled to support this program because it aligns with what our um, goals are for community support. But our hope is that other companies will follow suit so that in 2022 and beyond, um, businesses offer the financial support that's needed so that every veteran with dementia is able to free of charge, get the benefits and the joy of having a robotic companion pet. Now we've been talking about the benefits to a veteran who has dementia, but it's broader than that, right? Yep, because absolutely. it's uh, the people who also benefit are their loved ones, their family members, uh, good friends. Talk about yeah. that for a minute. Yeah, I mean, so even better, right? So not only does the person who is getting the care have the benefits, right, as in addressing uh, dementia symptoms, but we all know that when a patient is calmer, when they're more open, um, then that care circle, that care support system also benefits because it's less stressful to care for that individual. So it's always great when you have residual uh, benefits of a, of a program like this. Also, sometimes um, just uh, uh, a veteran is suffering from depression and loneliness, and, and these pets can also help alleviate that. And, yes. and you all deserve a lot of credit and a lot of thanks from me and many other people for helping us in this effort. You and Washington Gas are just great. So. Well, the thanks is ours, Steve. We're happy to support and happy that you were able to bring us in. Sure. I hope this program has got you thinking about people you know who suffer from dementia and how robotic pets can really help. To learn more about Capital Caring Health and its at-home care services for seniors, be sure to visit capitalcaring.org. And specifically, if you want more information about these fantastic companion robotic pets, you can go directly to capitalcaring.org slash companion pets. Here at Capital Caring Health, we are working to provide free of charge companion pets with advanced robotics like kibbles and butterscotch. They both would love to be in the lap of a dementia sufferer, brightening their days and nights in so many wonderful ways. We hope to provide these pets to over 5,000 of your neighbors suffering from Alzheimer's and other forms of dementia. Plus, you can also order a pet for your own family. So please, visit our website today at capitalcaring.org slash companion pets. With support from you and other viewers, these amazing pets will do wonders for so many families. Again, please visit capitalcaring.org slash companion pets. Thank you.